Now with new details on the horrific limo crash that killed 20 people, a criminal investigation is now underway as officials reveal that the limo company failed recent inspections and the driver did not have the right license for that vehicle. Our senior transportation correspondent David Curley is on the scene in Schoharie, New York with the latest. Good morning, David. Morning, George. The autopsies are still underway and investigators are taking apart that limo, trying to figure out why it crossed this state road at a high rate of speed. Overnight, 2,500 people joining in prayers and tears for the victims of that limousine accident. 17 family members and friends taking part in a 30th birthday celebration, all killed along with the driver and two pedestrians. This morning, investigators are narrowing their focus on the stretch limo, the driver, and the company, with New York's governor charging the driver wasn't properly licensed and the limo failed inspection just a month ago. The owner of the company had no business putting a failed vehicle on the road. Called the black box of the 2001 stretched Ford excursion, the airbag control module is being studied, hoping to show the last seconds or milliseconds before the crash, when the limo ran through a stop sign and into this parking lot. No signs of skid marks. The vehicle was traveling at a high rate of speed. The engine from this actually went beyond the driver's seat, behind the driver's seat? That's correct. The engine block was pushed back into the driver's compartment. But behind the seat? It's hard to tell because there's so much damage. Investigators say that this man, Shahid Hussein, owns Prestige, the limousine company. He worked as an FBI informant after being arrested for helping immigrants cheat on driver's tests while he worked for the DMV. For a time, he ran Prestige out of a back room of this low-budget hotel. The company does have a checkered safety record. In five safety inspections over the past two years, four vehicles were put out of service. That's four times the national average. Right now, Hussein is out of the country. And as crash investigators search for answers, it appears that some of the victims may have been worried about that limo's condition prior to the crash. According to the New York Times, one of those killed, Aaron McGowan, sent a text to a friend expressing concern, writing, quote, the motor is making everyone deaf. The company, in a statement, said it offered its condolences and that it has met with federal and state investigators already and plans to offer answers as quickly as possible to questions. George, just the shock of the number of deaths, not just here but across the country, remains on this story. Boy, it sure does. Okay, David, thanks very much. We're joined now by the attorney for Pre Prestige Limousine, Lee Kinlan. Lee, thank you for joining us this morning. We heard Governor Cuomo say this vehicle had no business being on the road. Why was it? Well, uh, and good morning, George. Good morning, everyone. Uh, you know, the Prestige uh, had been working with the state uh, to make sure that the vehicles were roadworthy. Uh, every single time a Department of Transportation uh, investigator or inspector would come out and talk to the, to the guys who operated the company, uh, any sort of minor infraction or major infraction would be fixed and the cars were allowed to be on the road. Just last week, uh, they met with members from the Department of Transportation uh, for ongoing inspections, and the cars were cleared to be on the road. Yeah, but this, this, this vehicle failed an inspection just last month. Sure, and we understand what the governor is saying, what the Department of Transportation is saying, and certainly it's in their interest to point away from any failures uh, on behalf of the state. But, you know, the, as we understand right now, the, the inspections last month were minor things, uh, windshield wipers, um, a latch on a, on a window that needed to be fixed, and all those things were fixed. Um, and so one of the questions that we're trying to help answer uh, very honestly is any of those excuse me any of those safety problems could those have contributed to the crash and we want to make everybody know right now that uh, we're doing everything we can to answer those questions along with uh, the state but how do you explain an 80 percent failure rate four times the national average for your vehicles overall well, you know, the, the way these fleets go, some, some of the vehicles are a little older, but, uh, and, you know, we're dealing with a small business in upstate New York um, that's regulated, and of course it should be regulated, um, and every single time that they were cited by the state, they would take appropriate remedial action, fix whatever was wrong with the vehicles, and uh, wait for clearance for those vehicles to get back on the road. You got the problems with the vehicles, you have the problem with the driver. He didn't have the proper license, according to state officials, so why was he driving? 
Well, honestly, George, that's one of the things we're looking into as well. Uh, we're conducting our own internal investigation and we're doing everything we can to provide documents and uh, whatever whatever we know, whatever prestige and the owners know uh, about the driver to, uh, to the investigators. Meantime, the owner of the company reportedly in Pakistan right now, so who exactly was in charge of the company while he was away? Well, the owner has been away for a couple of weeks uh, and he spends time both here and overseas. That's a very common thing for him. Um, the day-to-day -day operations uh, were his sons. Uh, they handled the calls and the bookings, and uh, they handled the maintenance and, uh, and things like that. So if, in fact, we need the owner to come back, you know, he's signaled his willingness to do so uh, if we can aid in the investigation in any way. Are you braced for criminal charges and lawsuits? Uh, you know, George, people don't call me unless um, a complex investigation with the potential of criminal uh, investigations are likely. So, yes, today we're going to talk to the district attorney's office. Uh, we're going to provide as much information as possible to the investigators. But clearly, um, uh, we have two concerns. One is making sure that we provide some sort of solace and, 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 and apology to, to the public and making sure that the public knows we're doing everything they can. But also, as an attorney, I have to make sure that my clients are protected because it seems abundantly clear right now that the state is looking to point fingers uh, and they're looking for a scapegoat rather than l waiting for the investigation to take place. Lee Kinlan, thanks for your time this morning. George, it's a pleasure. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.